Hi, I'm Dr. Meta van den Heuvel. I'm a pediatrician working in the Hospital of Sick Children. Today I would like to discuss our paper, Mobile Media Device is Associated with Communication Outcomes in 18-Month-Old Children. Mobile media devices are everywhere. We see young children in their strollers, during meal times, and in our pediatric offices with all kinds of mobile media devices. Previous literature demonstrated that increased television viewing in this age range has been associated with expressive speech delays. Mobile media devices are a little bit different. They have the opportunity to interact with the interface and therefore um, there might be a different relationship with communication outcomes in young children. The the objective of our study is to investigate the association between mobile media device use and communication outcomes in 18-month-old children. We used a cross-sectional design for our study. Data was collected during a scheduled 18-month health supervision visit from primary care practices participating in a community-based primary care research network, Target Kids, in Toronto, Canada. Parents were asked to fill in on a standardized survey how many minutes their child spent awake using mobile media devices like an iPad, tablet or mobile phone. Communication outcomes were investigated with a standardized survey instrument, the infant and toddler checklist. Our analysis focused on a logistic regression analysis. In the adjusted version, we adjusted for child sex, child temperament, maternal education, family income, parents' own mobile media device use, and the child's non-mobile media device use. In our study, we included 893 children with a mean age of 18.6 months. 78% of our parents reported zero minutes of mobile media device use. 22% of our parents reported mobile media device use with a mean duration of 15 minutes. In this figure, you can see that the proportion of mobile media device increased from 2011 till 2015. The results of our study indicated that in 18 months old children, 30 minutes in increased mobile media device viewing, there is an increased risk 2.3 times of expressive speech delay. Our results are in line with previous study investigating expressive speech delay and television study. To explain this association, we hypothesized about two possible mechanisms. The first one is that young children might use mobile media devices the same way as television, as a passive screen. They might not be able to learn from a mobile media device. The other one is that when a young child uses a mobile media device, there might be actually less parent-child interaction because the child is busy on its mobile media device. In our study, we we'll also explored the role of the different covariates in our logistic regression. Interestingly, the parents' own mobile media device use had the biggest effect on our beta estimates. Again, this points um, to a direction that when parents use mobile media devices, they are not interacting with their children, which is important for language development. Um, what should clinicians take away from this paper? Should we now, as pediatricians, discourage all mobile media device use in 18-month-old children? So the results of our study need to be interpreted with caution. It is a concessional design and no causal relation can be inferred. However, I do think that our paper aligns with the position statement of both the Academic Pediatric Society and the Canadian Pediatric Society about screen time and young children. Both societies recommend um, to avoid or discourage mobile media device use in young children and to avoid solo media device use in 18-month-old children. 
Future directions should focus on exploring the relationship between mobile media device and expressive speech delay further. Particularly, it should focus on the content and type of activities children are doing behind their mobile devices. They should report if children spend time on their mobile me media devices on their own and at last investigate long-term communication outcomes in young children. Thank you for your attention. I'd like to invite you to read our full article in the Journal of Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics. Thank you.